Hey guys, what's up? Inazilla back again today with another video. Today's top 10, we're going to be talking about bug types. Bug types are generally considered quite weak, but that's really just a misunderstanding because while they were bad in the first few generations, they're not anymore. But before we get into the thick of it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Not only does it help you keep updated on my latest content, but it helps the channel grow and allows even more people to find it. Win-win for all of us. Now, let's get into it. Number 1 is Scentascorch. Scentascorch basically only made this list because there aren't a ton of good bugs to choose from at the moment. Maybe Crown Tundra will fix that. I chose Scentascorch basically because I like it, not because it's good, Lanal. Let's take a look at its base stats. It's got a pre pretty decent total sitting at 525. It's got a usable attack stat at 115. It's pretty bulky despite that 65 defense because of its high HP stat. It's a physical attacker, so I wouldn't care about that base 90 special attack. Its greatest downfall is that awkward base 65 speed. Too fast for trick room and too slow for sweeping in normal conditions. It's outclassed as a slow wall breaker by things with higher offensive stats and more usable speed. It's also vulnerable to max airstream because it making an easy setup fodder for stuff like Gyarados or Cinderace. Most bugs have that problem, but Scentascorch especially because it's so slow. If they moved like 20 or 30 points from a special attack to its speed, it would be way better. I think the best way to run it, right now how it is, is to uh, max out its hit points in special defense with a careful nature and then use coil. This is best done when any or all flying types on the other side have been removed. Although Darmanitan will still 2 it KO you. Coil and 3 attack moves with some kind of recovery like Leftovers or Citrus Berry. But if you're playing uh, 6v6, the Stealth Rod becomes an issue because it's so prevalent there. Heavy Duty Boots is an option too, but they're, but then you don't have any passive recovery, and with a Pokemon this slow, that will be an issue. It's got 3 abilities, all 3 of which being pretty useful, honestly. Flash Fire makes you immune to fire attacks. White Smoke is pretty much clear body, ignores any stat drops imposed on you by opposing Pokemon. And my favorite, Flame Body, which will inflict burn status on Pokemon that hit you with a contact move 30% of the time. Physical attackers will have to think twice about just hitting you with a waterfall. It has a G-Max form, which, is real, which looks really cool. It's just outclassed by G-Max Charizard. Why? Because their signature max moves has very similar effects, but Charizard is faster and does more immediate damage. Next up is Galvantula. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a Galvantula can. Okay, he can't. Oh wait, yes he can. Miles Morales has an electric shock ability thingy. What, you don't understand? Get cultured, people. Lol, JK, JK. Galvantula also barely made this list, but it deserves to be here more than Scentiscorch, honestly. So here it is. Compound Eyes Thunder. Ouch. If you watched my Spider-Man theme team video, then you'll... No, even with that, Thunder still isn't the most reliable move. But it's got more than just Compound Eyes Thunder going for it. It's arguably one of the best Sticky Web setters in the game. Sticky Web's awesome because it drops the speed stat of all uh, grounded foes by one stage. Except contrary Pokemon, so uh, look out for Malamar, I guess? I guess I can mention that its coverage isn't the best, but it does the job. Back in Gen 6, I swept some 6v6 stats, uh, battles just by leading with it. Set Sticky Web, drop some nasty thunders, hit hard with bug buzzes and energy balls, and call it a day. Next up is Scizor. I haven't even built a Scizor yet, and I've seen more Scythers on the rank ladder, but Scyther is a topic for another section of this video. Spoiler alert, Scizor is a really good Pokemon. Its best ability by far is Technician, which boosts weak moves, uh, so base 60 or weaker, by 50%, so essentially moves like Bullet Punch have 60 base power instead of 40. It's good, solid, natural bulk. It can Sword Stance, it can punish faster Pokemon with Bullet Punch, and it can Iron Defense, but sadly it can't utilize Body Press. People used to run a super bulky set, maximizing its hit points and defense, and then running Sword Stance, boot, Roost, Bullet Punch, and a coverage move like Super Power or X-Scissor, but as of Generation 8, it no longer gets Roost, so that really takes away from the value of running a bulky set. That, and it can't Mega Evolve anymore. So, while Scizor isn't as good as it used to be, it's still pretty darn good. If you're a Smogon player, this won't be an issue for you. 
as for some reason they still allow legacy Pokemon with legacy moves into their format. Which honestly just encourages hacking, because who can get a legit Gen 3 event, ch uh, event chancy with Wish? But if you play ranked rules, not having a roost is a bit of an issue. You're not very fast sitting at base 65 speed, while well, like I said, you're very naturally, bul naturally bulky, so I think the best way to run Scizor is by maximizing his hit points and his attack this time, not defense, and going for Swords Dance, Bullet Punch, Dual Wing Beat, and either Super Power or Brick Break. That way, when you Dynamax it, sorry, Smogon people, you get defense, speed, and attack boosts. Although, with no speed investment, you're still going to get outsped by a lot of Pokemon. Dual Wing Beat is generally there to take advantage of Technician. A bandit set isn't either. <coughs> excuse me, isn't terrible either. Probably better for 6v6 though. That way it can provide with slow, heavy hitting U turns, which can allow a frail sweeper to come in unharmed. It can clean up late game with heavy hitting bullet punch, or it can just poke holes in teams. Scissor is a, still a great Pokemon. Oh, and my max defense Blissey got Okoed by a Scissor using Super Power while it was Dynamaxed. It was a crit, but still. It was probably banded. Anyways. Time to move on. Scyther. Funny how not fully evolved Pokemon can make these lists. Most of the time, well actually all the time, they need a Violate. Unless it's a weird fear set with Endeavor and Quick Attack, or some variation of that strategy. But while Scyther can totally make use of a Violate, it really doesn't need to. I've O-Code some with ne neutral max airstreams, so I don't know what item they were holding, but this video is talking about why these Pokemon are good. Not how they can get O-Code. Scyther is more of a speedy sweeper than its cousin Scizor. Base 105 speed and a base 110 attack, paired with Technician, can be a lethal combo. It has access to some ludicrously powerful max air streams, and it gets Swords Dance if it gets the Swords Dance off, and its uh, other stab lets it drop special attack. Max Flutter by. To make it even more lethal, it can utilize Max Knuckle. If you want to, though, you can still. Uh, Steel Wing, you can stick Steel Wing on the set for a defense boost while letting it handle rock types. Psycho Cut also lets it set up Psychic Terrain. Now you can't, no, now you don't need to worry about pesky priority abusers like Talon Flame or Lycan Rock. It can greatly utilize a Violate to make it ultra bulky, giving it more opportunities to set up. It can utilize Life Orb too, so if you find you're not getting a lot of opportunities to set up because it, it gives you all that, all that raw power. Heavy Duty Boots is probably the go-to in a 6v6 environment due to the prevalency of Stealth Rock there. Scyther is just a great Pokemon now, and you can thank Dynamax for that. Thank you, Generation 8. Scolipede. Like I said before, even talking about set to Scorch, there aren't a ton of great Pokemon this generation. Scolipede does uh, slip its way into the top 10 though. It does have its uses. It can set up sword stances and abuse its speed boost ability to sweep or it can baton pass these boosts to a teammate that can utilize the boost better. It can do the same with iron defense as well, and that, well, that's pretty much it. There is another Pokemon that we can compare to, and I'll let you know what it is. It's fellow bug Pokemon buddy, Ninjask. Ninjask is naturally faster, but is far more frail and will get taken advantage of more often than not. And that's why I put Scolipede here instead of Ninjask. It's bulkier, can take enough hits to set up before it baton passes. Scolipede can also set up entry hazards, which is always fun, but it's more suited to a 6v6 environment. I don't think there's really a point in going to depth about, into depth about counters to Scolipede strategies, but it hates air streamers just like any other bug, and it hates it even more because airstream pretty much negates the effects of speed boost. And if the opposing air streamer is naturally faster, all they have to do is air stream three times and they'll kill you. Kill you. And now they have a win condition because they have a super fast heavy hitting Pokemon on the other side now. Oh, and Dual Wing Beat Talonflame will murder it too. Why? Well, I don't, didn't mention it before, but Scolipede pretty much needs Substitute to pull off its tricks, but Dual Wing Beat is just going to break this up and do damage. It's a neat Pokemon, but Dynamax was kind of a soft nerf to Scolipede, and any other form of strategy like this. Next up is Fulcarona. I mentioned this bug in the Fire Types video, and for good reason. I'm not one of those guys that counts out a Pokemon from one list just because it made another. I hate that. It's like counting out a pro athlete from winning the highest scoring award because he was on a team that won a championship. It makes no sense to me. Anyways, Volcarona. This bug suffers greatly from Stealth Rock because of its typing. But 
like I said, 6v6 is almost dead this generation. I haven't you do boots or anything. So if you do play 6v6, that's probably the best item for our ugly bug friend here. What makes Volcarona terrifying though is its access to Quiver Dance and Fiery Dance. Quiver Dance boots its special stats as well as its speed by one stage each. And Fiery Dance is a very spammable base 80 special fire move that can boost your special attack even further. If you're playing doubles, Heat Wave is definitely the better option though. It can airstream when Dynamax, set sun, drop opposing special attacks with max flutter by, and has access to G Giga Drain for sustain, and you can even turn into max overgrowth to bomb water types. I think you're safe. Its downfalls though are that you need to set up a you need to set up the sweep, and you can be kind of hard to do this generation because of a lot of Pokemon just carrying flying moves just for max airstream. But it's not, and it's got bad physical defense. It's naturally not the fastest either, so even after one Quiver Dance, something might outspeed you. All in all though, great Pokemon. It is what Frostmoth wants to be. Next up, Heracross. Moxie, Choice Scarf, Sweep. Oh, you wanna run a gut set? Okay, uh, slap a Flame Orb on it. Give it Protect, Facade, Close Combat, and Mega Horn. Or if you like hitting your attacks, X Scissor. What? It doesn't get X Scissor. What? That's lame. Okay, uh, Mega Horn or Pin Missile then. Inaccurate power or inconsistent power. Take your pick. Either version though, well, you can slap Aerial Ace onto the moveset to have access to Max Airstream. So maybe you could get away with a Life Orb or something instead of Choice Scarf for the Moxie set. Yay, a bug fighting type Gyarados. I do believe the Moxie route is the best way to go though. It will provide you with a win condition more often than not. And now I really want to build one, so I might have to do that later. Heracross does have solid, very usable stats. Base 125 attack and 85 speed paired with max airstream is enough to ruin anybody's day. Although the airstream will be, will be relatively, relatively weak, I believe max airstream has 110 base power when working off of aerial ace, so it's better used to pick off weakened Pokemon off. In my notes here, I I put I spelled bass wrong. I spelled bass as in bass guitar instead of bass as in B-A-S-E, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> now where were we? <laughs> Another awesome reason to use Heracross is that you can theoretically get plus two attack from knocking out one Pokemon. How? Max not cool? Plus Moxie is a deadly combo. That's how. Heracross isn't perfect though. Like all other bug types, it hates flying Pokemon, especially Talonflame. So if you're using it in a 6v6 environment, it might be a good idea to have Stealth Rocks up, so it doesn't get to abuse its Gale Wings, just to OKO you with Brave Bird. That, and make sure to either have plus one speed, either in the form of Choice Scarf or Airstream. Having Rock Slide may be a good idea as well. I think I've said enough about Heracross. Next up is Butterfree! Compound Eyes of Sleep Powder is a deadly combo. Most of the time, <coughs> most of the time, not when you're out sped. Butterfree may not look like it, but it's a strong Pokemon. With Compound Eyes, Sleep Powder loses its terrible reputation for being a bad move and becomes OP. Now that its victim is asleep, it's free to set up Quiver Dance or substitutes if it wants to. Then it can just Dynamax and get even faster with Max Airstream. Drop special attack with max flutter by, or you can run a Gigantamax on the G-Max B-Fuddle, which will randomly select a status to inflict on the opposing Pokemon. These are Sleep, Paralysis, and Poison. This could be nice if you run into a bulky Steel flying type like Corviknight or Skarmory that otherwise walls you. It's probably best to run Focus Sash on Mothra, uh, I mean Butterfree, because it means even if your opponent outspeeds you, you still be able to still be able to put them to sleep, uh, unless they flinch you. Or they have a Lumber Chesto Berry. Or they have Dual Wing Beat. Or they're a Grass type. But if that's the case, you could just go big and Airstream them. Butterfree is just better than people give credit for. Next up, a Raquinid. Water Bubble? Check. Liquidation? Check. Choice Band? Check. Alright, we're ready to go. A Raquinid's signature ability, Water Bubble, is really awesome. It reduces the power of fire type moves giving Araquanid a resistance to fire and it doubles the power of water type moves. Now let's talk about its stats. Base 68 hit points, honestly not great. But paired with that 92 defense and ridiculously high 132 special defense, this thing is actually really tanky. 
The attack set isn't anything to write home about either, honestly. But we'll talk about that in a minute. 50 be uh, special attack. So basically don't use that unless you're using some weird bulky defensive set with skull. And 42 speed. Looks like we got ourselves a trick room abuser here. Back in Gen 7, with what little Gen 7 I played, I used a choice banded Arachnid, Arachnid quite a bit and it surprisingly found some really nice KOs. That base 70 attack like I mentioned isn't good, but with that with water bubble and a heavy hitting move like with liquidation you're hitting harder than one punch man's sig signature consecutive normal punches attack. Of course, you need coverage too, so with moves like lunge which drop the opponent's attack, leech lights uh, which restores half health dealt and poison jab, you're ready to go. Yeah, two bug moves. It doesn't really have good type coverage, but who cares because water bubble liquidation. People like to run an offensive variant for some reason with sticky web, but I feel that's better left off to its other spider friend, Calpantula. As for running it in Trick Room, I'm going to have to build a team around it to see how well it works. I don't know how well it's going to be because it bas basically only wants to use water moves, so uh, probably not well. Number 10, Shuckle. Contrary Shell Smash, GG, get good. Contrary Shell Smash with Rest and Infestation, welcome to hell. Contrary Shell Smash, smash with Rest, Infestation, and Toxic, that's just unfathomable. With Rest, this thing becomes an unkillable monster. That hilariously monstrous base 20 hit points paired with ludicrous 230 in both its defenses means it takes hits with the best of them. 10 in both offenses is with 5 speed is cancer, so don't even try. Unless you somehow pull off a weird power trick set. There are people out there who use Chuckle for Sticky Web and Stealth Rock setting, but those people are just missing out on the ever superior Contrary Shell Smash set. There is one other thing Chuckle can do better than anything else though. What is it you may be asking? Well, if your opponent is an absolute moron, you may be able to pull it off. Pull off 6 defense curls in a row. Okay, step 1 done. Now use Rollout. Defense Curl powers up Rollout for some reason, and always has since Gen 2, but Shuckle has the highest damage output from Rollout. Okay, uh, you know what? I'll let Bubba's PD describe it. A level 100 Shuckle can potentially deal the most damage in one single attack through the use of numerous stat boosters. By using Helping Hand by two different Pokemon in a triple battle, holding a metronome, power trick, a skill swap to pure power or huge power, Six attack boosts and a mimic me first used on a slower Pokemon using the defense curl rollo combo. Also, Chuckle's partner must also have the ability Flower Gift, and the weather must be sunny. On the fifth turn of using rollo consecutively without any misses, if used against a level 1 Ladybug, Gamma, or Combi with minimum defense stats that have been hit with negative defense modifiers such as Screech, Screech it can deal 481,266,036 damage with a critical hit. That information is a little bit out of date because we don't have triple battles anymore and critical hits back in those days did double power. So yeah, it's out of date, but it's still ludicrously powerful. Yeah, that's that's Shuckle, folks. That's it for the top 10. What'd you guys think? What would have made the list in your opinion? As you can see from the red bar in this video, it's not even over yet though. Here are the honorable mentions. Excelgore. This thing has a gimmick where it can water shuriken a teammate palisand in doubles to proc water compaction 2 plus times, and weakness policy all the time in the same turn. In singles, it can play around with yawn and entry hazards, or even have a really fast final gambit. It's too bad final gambit doesn't work in max raids, because that could be pretty funny. Pincer. Pincer is Heracross, but with no fighting stab, so just use Heracross. If its mega still existed, it would, but it would be for sure make this list, but there's no Mega, so there's also no use for Pinsir. Frostmoth. It was okay to begin with, but we have Volcarona now, and there's basically no reason to talk about Frostmoth anymore. Its ability is cool though. Ice Gales has the damage from special moves. It's got good special attack and special defense. Just it's got bad speed and virtually no physical defense. So unless your opponent's whole team is special, you're going to have a hard time setting up Quiver Dance with this thing. Oh yeah. You're going to need to set up with at least two before sweeping with it because it's just so darn slow. Next up is Galissapod. This thing could make the list, but its ability is pure garbage. 
Once it reaches half its health, it's forced to switch out. Other than that, it may be slow, but it's pretty darn bulky and has access to Sora's dance and a plethora of priority moves. Dotler. It can do some some of the same stuff Dusclops can do in doubles. It can ally switch, set trick room, proc a weakness policy on a teammate with a weak attacks. It can also utilize skill swap for some gimmicky strategies. Just beware skill swap doesn't work on Dynamax Pokemon. Ninjask. Essentially just a Scolipede with worse stats. It's naturally faster, but after a turn or two it's irrelevant, so Scolipede is just better. That and Scolipede can boost its defense rel reliably with Iron Defense, unlike Ninjask. Okay, that's it for the video guys. I see we're over 20 minutes. I apologize for that. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Did I miss anything? Did I misrepresent your favorite bug types? Let me know in the comments below. Also, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Why not check out my other stuff as well? Till next time guys. Mm, bye.